Why did you decide to add a chapter on music to the updated and expanded edition of Brain Rules? Well, I added a chapter on music to the new edition of Brain Rules for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest is that I kept getting asked about it. Whenever I would go out and lecture, the Q&A time often had a question about music, especially about its ability to boost performance in other cognitive domains. You may have heard of the Mozart effect. It morphed into an industry that suggests listening to classical music as a child will get you into Harvard as a teenager. I realized there was enough concern and enough mythologies out there that it was time to address what turns out to be a myth. The second reason is that the field was maturing. There are enough good folks doing enough great work that you could go out and say something responsible about the effects of music in other cognitive domains. As ever with research, the results have been exciting and unexpected. There are things which surprisingly do get a boost, especially if you are practicing on an instrument for a period of time. Word recognition improves. Vocabulary and nonverbal reasoning improves. You get improvement in what is called auditory stream segregation. This is the ability to pick out a specific sound from a crowded auditory space and pay specific attention to it. Now, some things don't improve with music, and these have been equally unexpected. Many people thought that math scores would improve if you listened to music or practiced music. Turns out not to be the case. There are great reasons both to listen to music and play a musical instrument, but it has nothing to do with improving a math score on the SAT. 